this basically helps anything that's stuck down in his lungs. The Campbell home is a busy one. Never complete silence and never nothing to do. That's life with Brian. Cared for 24-7, Brian has spinal muscular atrophy, specifically wording Hoffman disease. He lost the nerve cells in his spinal cord and nobody saw it coming. Because I thought when I was carrying him that everything was okay. Carrying her third child and with two healthy daughters already, Alola and Gary Campbell figured Brian was next. And the day he arrived, were hardly prepared for what happened next. Well, he was just really rigid and um, he didn't make a sound. Brian was put on a respirator. The doctors and Gary rushed him to the emergency room with bad news soon to follow. And the doctors said, you know, there's something serious going on here. Oh, it was like my heart being ripped out. The doctors told them that newborns with wording Hoffman disease rarely live more than a year. And they advised Gary and Alola to remove him from life support. At that point, she told them, uh, absolutely not. I thought that, well, I'm going to devote my life at trying to make him comfortable because we knew that he wasn't going to get any better. They brought in help, and with each day, Brian outlives his outlook. They think that the only reason that he made it is because of the love and care he got, and, uh, and I believe that to be true. Love, care, and support in many forms. His room is one of the coolest around, with a harness and track system to get him up and out of bed, a bathtub that gets brought to him, a chair that gets him around with a ventilator he depends on. And support from the MDA has been huge, helping the family when it hits the road for bowl games with the Ducks, helping them find a hotel near hospitals and medical supplies, or find a technician. Who knows, we might need someone to come out and service that ventilator then they make sure that we have the connection that we need. And connections are something Brian wants too. Mom says he loves to be around people. He loves for people to come up and say hello to him. To rub his hand, his face, or touch him on the head. I think he just liked to be loved. Despite his challenges, he's conquered many, even earned his high school diploma. And although he's unable to move, Brian has moved a lot of people. Having Brian made me realize what life's all about you know it's about you know your family um, it's about kids a couple of freshmen a college football player and now a coach for the first time football and first downs weren't gary's top priority and the family came together i think it has brought us closer together um, i think we understand how to love each other and love every day a few years back brian became seriously ill 17 days in the ICU. And the doctors had prepared us for the worst. Brian was passing large amounts of blood, and again, doctors had given up on him. Said, well, you know, this is it. He's not going to make it. And we thought, sure, that he wouldn't be coming home. But Brian was determined to show others what his family already knew. I would say that he is a fighter. He is. He's tough. He's really tough. I'd spend nights up there with him and look him in the eyes and... I could tell he was still, you know, he still had that fight in him. And he was right. Brian suddenly got better. There were tears of joy, I think, mean, for that, to know that he won another round. Brian would go home, go to more bowl games, have more better days. We're just happy on, on the good days when, you know, we can see that sparkle in his eyes. Sometimes bringing tears to their eyes. My proud moment with him is when I walk into the room and I can see that he's doing well. You know, we kind of know when he's moving around and, and, and bobbing his head that, that he's happy. And that fills us all with joy. Almost 27 years after his arrival, the Campbell home, still busy, never silent. Always something to do. It's life with Brian.